There's so many ways that I've sort of figured out how to tell this story, but the, the simplest way to tell the story is that I, seven years ago, wanted to think about what it might mean to rethink how we clothe a body. And, and that came out of uh, uh, thoughts of mine about the limitations of thinking the body as an envelope. So I had been designing clothing for years, and I knew the tendency that people had to feel, um, a lot of people have to feel that they have to fit into something that isn't really conforming, not only to their shapes, but also to their tactile desires. So I began to experiment with cutting fabric to see what a cut would be that would facilitate the making of all kinds of garments. I made a first collection that was very theoretical and very, um, uh, I'm also a philosopher, so it had all these philosophical implications, and it was a disaster. Um, it produced only capes. Uh, <laughs> so then I went back to the drawing board, and I w it became a little bit more um, uh, geometric in my thinking. Um, and I designed about 500 patterns, and out of those I cut 2,000 pieces. And the 2,000 pieces are all different. And each of the pieces um, I overlocked so it wouldn't fray. And then over, and, and none of this was thought out. It's not that I started seven years ago and thought I'm going to go to a Biennale and present this work. It was really much more processual than that. But what I thought would work would be to have buttons and buttonholes um, so that people could connect the fabric. But because I didn't want the work to be modular, um, so I didn't want people to think of the edges as the, gar as the garment, which people have a tendency to do. I started to introduce magnets into the work. So it has about at least 10,000 rare earth magnets, which are really, really small. In this case, they're really, really small, and they're sewn in. And they facilitate a fold. So that people are, they are welcome to work with the, the flat geometry, but it's actually much more interesting to design with a fold. And what you get when you design with a fold is a volume and you also lose the sense of a positive and negative space. And so what I did over years was um, get people together to sew. Each piece takes about five hours, so there are 2,000 pieces. And um, what I started finding is that if I organized a sewing circle, which I did on Sundays at our house with tea and, and soup, that people kept coming. And they would ask me, when's the next sewing circle? So the, the work itself is called Folds to Infinity, so the fabric collection. The piece in its original iteration was called Slow Clothes. And so over those years, I exhibited it in different venues, but always only for a very short period. And I allowed any kind of transformation to take place, all the way from the environment to the body. And then uh, when I was invited to come to the Biennale, I thought, well, I'll do a final iteration of the work. So we sewed another, another um, 500 pieces, which are all the blues, all the translucent colors. And, and, and thought about developing a vista that was a bit of a, the, it, it came from an image we had of when the sun goes down over the ocean. And there's this kind of particular light to Australia or to this hemisphere when the, the, the day meets or the end of the day meets the water. And it's a kind of quiet time and it's a threshold space. And so with Samantha Spur, who's an architect and designer, we designed, and her wonderful students, this extraordinary fishing net, which is indigenous fishing net, used here in Australia. And I used all of these translucent pieces to get a sense of looking across color. And for this iteration of the work, which is now called Stitching Time, what I'm hoping to do is to invite people to participate in the uh, experiment of sharing time so you share time in the sense that every piece you touch is already a gift of time by someone you'll likely never meet. Um, and to compose with the fabric. So you have these two um, iterations of the work happening at once. The sculptural work, which in this particular case is, um, will stay the same. And then all of the baskets are full of uh, fabric that people are welcome to um, dress with. And the sewing table is there to facilitate any changes people want to make once they're in the midst of composing. They might need an extra button or they might need to take a button off. And then as people give time, 
very, very slowly and in a way that I'm still learning how to sense. The garment that they've created takes on its own personality and at that point um, it becomes theirs. And so um, I'd like to give the work away, but I'd like to give it away in an ethos of time. So it's not that you can come in here like a shopping center and just pick things out and go. It's really a, it's really a, a meeting of times, different levels of time. Sometimes I think of it as geological time, different currents of time. And so, yeah, the work uh, for me philosophically is about um, making felt different, different layers of, of of time and participating in how these layers of time move from the art space into the world because as the pieces wander back into the world then they give the world uh, they, get, they 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 you know they're li these little nuggets of time that move into into the world all of my work has has a, an interest in rearticulating the political so my work is always to some degree about exploring new forms of collaboration and and, and how we stage the encounter is central to that. Um, and so art becomes a lure to stage encounters, I think. Um, not so different from all the other lures, like tea time or, you know, hanging out at the mall. I mean, there are lots of ways in which we do that in, in everyday life. It's just, I think, another kind of way. Um, and I think that one of the things that is politically uh, necessary is for us to challenge the idea that we have a neutral body, that our body is simply sort of mobilized by society through the media or through other forms of um, describing it or catching it in its in its in, in in its stopping of movement. And so, a lot of my philosophical work has been about movement and how movement is actually um, much more key to the body than than non-movement. So, you know, giving the the people the opportunity to rediscover how a body moves is pretty central to the idea of how the pieces fold. But, you know, none of that is so important to the piece. What's important, I think, to the piece for me, because I'm giving this this time myself, I'm staying here for the duration, what's more important to me is also learning what it is that people take from the encounter. What is necessary? What is an encounter? Um, and, you know, after three days, I'm, I've already learned a lot, you know. People have been coming back. And,